So I'm going to talk about um, agriculture, biodiversity and climate change. And I'm going to do something a bit dumb, which is just to say they're all connected. So if you want to go to sleep for five minutes, go to sleep. <laughs> I'm so dumb, I don't even know how to advance it. There we go. <laughs> Um, so agriculture uses a lot of land. So 35% of all of the Earth's land space was in agriculture in the year 2000. And about one third of that area, about 11% of the total of the Earth's land is used for crops. So it's a significant um, anthrome. It's a significant um, human-induced land use. Um, the good news is that agriculture is becoming more efficient. What you can see on this slide, if I can work out how to use the pointer is um, you can see the average cereal yield is going up here between 1960 and 2000. And what's shown in this one going down is the area, the hectare per capita, and that's going down. So we're using less land to feed more people. The bad news is that we're not doing that fast enough. So further conversion of land to agriculture is, is still happening. So about 22% of the um, increase in, in agricultural productivity came from expansion, the rest of it being met with um, intensification. And of course, intensification in the past has not been neutral with respect to the, the, the impacts on the environment. The Green Revolution fed more people. Uh, the reason we can support all those people on the planet because of the Green Revolution, but that's come at the expense of water quality, air quality, soil quality, biodiversity, and a whole bunch of other things. Um, and the, the, the area that's, that we're expanding into is largely uh, uh, natural ecosystems like, uh, uh, like forests and such like. Um, future cropland expansion, so moving on from that, you know, the fact that we've perhaps got some more in the pipeline. If we look at where the croplands are likely to expand, this is, this is uh, the wrong button. Uh, this is... Um, this is just looking at the cropland expansion projected by the image model out to 2050. Uh, what we've done there is we've just mapped that onto, these er uh, onto the, uh, the, the endangered and the critically endangered species to look at what species are going to be um, affected in these different regions where cropland expansion is, is projected to occur. That's out this week in Global Change Biology. Um, and uh, this was a study that, that everybody hated, but it's now published, so, so there you go. <laughs> Um, just showing that, that there's also direct impacts of climate change um, on biodiversity. So this is just a, um, a, a, a criticised study looking at the, the difference in refugia of moving from a two degree target to a 1.5 target. This was followed up um, by uh, some of the co-authors in a, in a paper in Science a little later, which drew, a lot of the way, uh, drew away a lot of the flack from this paper, which was great. Um, Agriculture is responsible for climate change. So coming back to the other linkages there, um, agriculture, the ag agriculture, forestry and other land use sector is responsible for um, about 24% of all greenhouse gas emissions. So as a single sector, it's very, very important in causing climate change. And uh, as you would expect, um, climate change has this feedback effect. So the more that climate changes, um, the worse things get in terms of agricultural production and agricultural yield. So when we're looking at the opportunity space, I work almost entirely in the mitigation and opportunity space now. What can we do about it rather than what are the threats? We need to look across all of these issues. What's going to co-deliver to uh, biodiversity um, and climate change, adaptation and mitigation? In the, um, the IPCC report that we're currently putting together on climate change and land, we're also looking at the impacts on degradation, land degradation, desertification and food security. It's, I can't show you that now because this has only just gone to second order draft review. But what we did is we tried to rank all of the different measures, 42 different measures, a magic number, that have a possibility to operate across this space. Some of them land-based, um, for example, wetland restoration, some of the ones that, that, um, that Bronson showed. Some of them to do with dietary change, waste reduction, so on the demand side. Um, and, uh, and some of them on the governance and risk management side, for example, prevention of land grabbing and securing land tenure, those sorts of things. What we expected to do was put them together and find a whole bunch of green and a whole bunch of red across those different surfaces. But what we found is that among those 42, many, many more than half, way more than half, were positive across all of those different challenges. And very few were had a bunch of trade-offs. 
So when we look at the co-benefits and trade-offs, it all depends on scale, um, but the, um, the co-benefits largely outweigh the trade-offs. We do, we've done a spatial analysis on that, which I won't go into, and it matters where you do those things. But there's, there's areas for optimism in that we can find some no regrets, win, 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 win options in many, many different places. And that's a better story to tell people than, than, than we're all doomed. Um, impacts of some of the, the, the only thing to look out for is some of these have negative impacts. This is an example of a trade off where we're using a mitigation action. This is bioenergy with carbon capture and storage having a negative impact on biodiversity. And you can do this sort of analysis looking at what's going to work at what scale. Just bringing us back to this one, which Bronson put up early and Chris showed earlier as well. This is just showing, you know, we've got the air, the biodiversity, the water and the soil co-benefits associated with a bunch of these. These are just the land based options, but there are also options on the demand side and options on the government governance and risk management side to help us move forward. I'll leave it there. Thanks.